So good evening, good morning, and uh, good afternoon to you folks out there. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in. It is a lovely Thursday night. My name is Fani Renderers, and tonight we are going to be looking at Blazor again, uh, trying to uh, implement our admin form of our SDN Cast website. Um, so you guys will hopefully help me. I do do make a ton of mistakes uh, obviously so um and i like the interaction uh, so if you do have a question uh post it here on this uh, chat room we have we've got here um there's no one really chatting right now but don't be alarmed you can be the first one um, that can uh, can put up your hand it's not that scary um let me know how your day was how your week was it's almost weekend uh, well from the netherlands it's uh, basically thursday well friday i would say um yeah uh, it is a code stencil hello 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 nice to see you hope you're well thank you very much for uh, tuning in um let me know how your week was uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, any technical .NET stuff or azure related stuff uh, or even specifically blazer please Let's all see if we can uh, solve the problems or your, on, at least answer your questions um, on the show. So I think without any further ado, uh, let us uh, quickly see if we can. Uh, oh, maybe I must just see. Um, yeah, we'll actually just start the show. <laughs> So, we got some background music playing, Danny Evo in the background, Neptune. Oh, this is not Danny Evo, sorry. This is called Neptune by Zircon. It's also on the, on the chat showing. Uh, if you just joined us, welcome. It is uh, a lovely Thursday night. It's a nice day for coding, live coding. Uh, but before I go on, I would like to sort of highlight a few of our co-streamers. Uh, just want to see what's happening in the chat here. Uh, code Stencil. Well, I've been busy working on a new release of my code generation tool all week. CodeStencil.com Well, uh, let's quickly see what is Code Stencil. Uh, we will actually... Code Stencil... We will take a look at Code Stencil together. How's that? Um, a big shout out to uh, Code Stencil that just, uh, this is actually quite cool. Let me see how this uh, works. We'll maybe dive into that uh, in a sec. Um, yeah, so if you just joined us, uh, today we will be doing some Blazor programming, which is ASB.NET, IKA.NET Core, uh, doing, modifying our website called SDNCast. Uh, we ported that to Blazor. We just got one more, one more page to go to uh, make it com completely Blazified. Code Stencil, thank you very much for the follow. That's amazing. How about a Capigen for you? That's awesome. I'm going to blow this page up with Capigens, especially for you, Code Stencil. Thank you very much for the follow. You're awesome. Um, so if, if you just joined us, we've been doing some, some Blazorification on a normal ASP.NET Core Razor Pages website that's been going fantastic. Do check out our, um, our, our archive on, on Twitch and a, um, to see what's on YouTube rather, uh, to see how we progressed building this site. It's a completely, it's a very simple website, but we learned a lot. I personally, I learned quite a lot on how Blazor evolved, especially from the preview experimental phase to the release candidate that is shipping next week, folks, at .NET Conf, which is the event, by the way, getting all the .NET guys together online. It's an online conference. Um, you might want to see that. You don't want to miss that. So that is a conference for .NET folks. Uh, called .NET Conf. It's free. It's online, and I think it's going to be streamed 24/7. If I do not, if I don't mistake that, so they're going to be trying all sorts of kind of things. So they're going to be launching. My point is, they're going to be launching uh, .NET Core 3 
at .NET Conf, um, which is quite cool. But don't be alarmed. You don't. You can actually start using .NET Core three now in production apparently because it it has a support license. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. So in any case, let's maybe um, switch to the. Just want to see what's happening here. My phone is blowing up. Just want to maybe put this off. <clears throat> there we go. What's happening with the music? There we go. Boomdock by James Flamstar. Um, okay, where am I? Let me just get my head straight here. Changing my screen, uh, I am going to my screen. Quickly go to the screen. Hey, there's me, kind of a streamception. I think Gerald is hosting me. Thank you very much, Gerald. First place for the host. And uh, there's another, another streamception. Let's give it a cap again. Thank you very much, Gerald. Um, so do check out Gerald Verschleis, uh, twitch.tv slash JF Verschleis, um, or Versch Lewis. Doesn't really matter how you say it. It's still awesome. This guy does awesome Xamarin forms development. Do check him out. He does uh, live coding every Tuesdays at half past eight central or European, central European summer time. Then you don't want to miss Martin van Stam. That's twitch.tv slash Martin van Stam. So if you're into office development, he does awesome office apps. That's cross-platform Mac OS, uh, Linux and Windows. And uh, he does uh, also half past eight uh, central uh, European time. He does some office apps uh, also in live coding. Then we have just quickly, we have got Jan Dev. Our friend from Azure, he does. Oh, he is also hosting me. Oh, that's awesome! Thank you very much for the host, Jan Dev. Here's a capuchin for you, my friend. Um, so let me just get back to his profile. Yeah. So he does. Uh, phenomenally, he does. Uh, thank you very much, uh, SDN Cast, for that. Uh, links on the chat. I did not. Uh, I did not uh, think about that. That's actually cool. Thank you very much. Uh, so JF for Schleiss, I must actually put on quickly. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, SDN Cast, for uh, doing that. Um, so yeah, the Underfreeze is normally doing uh, also also .NET, but mostly Azure based uh, development, I believe. Do check out his uh, um, his uh, Twitch uh, Twitch account, twitch.tv slash Dev. Last but not least, we have our friend Eric Lehman. He's, he's been, uh, I think he's been quiet for some time now, but he does, uh, he does seem to do a few things. He does also Azure stuff, but also he's an Ariella board member, apparently. Uh, so his title is Ariella and .NET Live Coding. So do check out Eric's stream. Um, he does a stream, I have no idea when, but uh, I, I believe he's on my hosting list. So if, uh, if he's live, he probably will be hosted. Um, by myself or anyone, any other guys uh, out there. Right, so Code Stencil uh, had a specific, uh, special request for me to show you guys Code Stencil. So this is actually very interesting. A new ASP.NET Razor Pages generator. Interesting. So what is this? We have a uh, Code Stencil is an intelligent code generator that allows you to build code generation logic based on the logic and flow of your code. No need to template, no need for any template languages. Hmm. Is that so? How does it work? Stencil generate a complete application with full CRUD capabilities without writing a single line of code. Are we going to try it out? I think we're going to try this out. How? Oh, why not? We've got so many time, so much time. How do we try this out? Where do I download this? Download trial? Do I have to buy it? Code stencil. Maybe if you can uh, let us know where we can uh, download this trial. It's probably a Windows. Hmm. Do I really need to download the EXE? That I don't. Maybe this is a maybe a good idea to do this. Let's do this. Let's uh, open up Sandbox. Orders up. Not that I don't trust you, but uh, you never know what's happening. So let's open up the Sandbox. 
and then let's go to uh, code stencil there we go uh, okay so we need to go to code stencil.com right so it's code stencil.com so this is the real test right to see if it really works on the real machine is to run it onto the windows sandbox if you just joined us uh, welcome first of all my name is Fonny Reinders we're doing some we're doing some live coding but first we're checking out the community projects we're checking out uh, the folks that's helping the community grow with live streaming i uh, just uh, quickly doing a shout out to these folks and now I'm quickly checking out code stencils project before we move on to the um, to the live coding of tonight this in costs asks how do you do sandbox well I can show you if you go to start you go to control panel then you go to your uh, programs and then you need to go to your windows features on or off and then in there you need to scroll down and there's this but uh, feature called window sandbox you just put that one on and you're good to go but i believe you would need to have a certain build of windows and that i don't give it you can just google that to see that you would need uh if you guys don't mind i'm going to change the music to something more like um more like hip hop -y. you guys like hip hop let's uh, do some hip hop and get into the mood so code stencil let's uh, see if we can download your project quickly and to see how it works my name okay my name is joe soap that link has been sent um okay is there any way that i can download this without signing up and giving my email address away uh Oh, okay. Code Stencil is going to check in his database to activate something special for us so that we need that don't need to. Um, <laughs> let me re remove that restriction, he says. He or she says. Uh, that's interesting. It's actually quite cool that he can do production changes like that. <laughs> Let's go. Go and do something else in the meantime. Well, okay. Um... Is live coding the site while well, live coding? Well, do you have a do you have a, a channel live uh, code stencil? Maybe we can actually view your channel and have the folks have a shout out to you. That'll be quite cool. Uh, okay, what do I have to do in the meanwhile? Uh, I can maybe show off what we've done in the previous episodes of our uh, of our website. So if you something is happening if you go to um is then cast nl uh, dash test dot azure websites dot net that i'll also put it in the chat and uh, if you go there you will see the test this is the test site using production data uh, and this is a completely a blazerified application uh, of sdncast.nl. So this all works and it's quite fast. Um, and it's like you can see, it's a fairly simple site. So what we're going to be implementing today is this administrator section. Because if you look at the normal site, the sdncast.nl site, when I go to the admin section, it, it sort of quickly logs me in but the, the point being is it goes it should go to azure active directory to sign me in because we are connected to azure ad and then um, it will bounce back to this page which is restricted and this little form we will be filling in uh, or implementing it rather today or tonight or this morning wherever you are uh, so this page requires you to log in so we can go do the login it will go go there and it will come back if i go to admin it says to do admin page uh i wonder if i can just hopefully code stencil won't take too long so let's see what's uh, what else is there downloads is this dev extreme grid stencil 
Ah, okay, so you've got stencils that you use and it generates based on templates, I believe. Very interesting. Well, you know what? Let's, in the meanwhile, let's, in the meanwhile, watch this video. I don't know if there's sound. generated for foreign keys let us see how this is done there is a new feature called stencil manager that allows easy download and registration of stencils it shows you the stencils available online in the code stencil marketplace and will allow you to download and install which one you want okay proceed to install the ASP.NET Core Razor Stencil. Hope you guys can hear this. Let's maybe mute the music. Registering stencils are so much easier now and you have immediate access to stencils as soon as they are deployed to the marketplace. Once installed, you can see that it is available locally. Create a project called My Project. Go ahead and download. Okay, let me see what happens. I'm going to stop this. You guys can... Uh, the link that Code Stencil just posted, you guys can go there to watch the video. I'm actually going to see if I can uh, download this trial again. There we go. Thank you very much, Code Stencil. It works. Live tested on my stream. Okay, that will probably take a few minutes to download. Uh, you probably build this in .NET, right? Or what language is it built in? Is this a VB application? Do let us know in the comments or uh, in the chat. You're asking me what is my provider? Well, my provider is uh, not what you think it is. I cannot name drop here. <laughs> So, come on, let's uh, download it. I'm streaming at 4K, come on. Hopefully. <laughs> let's see if we can get some music going again. Right. It's taking a bit of a while. You see, the downloads also depends on your server, right? So if your server is a slow server, it will download slow. It's like a bottleneck effect. So this is Hipster Mom by MC Lars. So that's all I can say. I'm not a radio DJ. I'm just like doing things. Um, if you don't mind, we're going to pause that for a sec to see because it kind of takes takes a while for some reason. I'm going to be pausing that for a sec and uh, I'm going to be switching over the code to the real stuff to see if we can um, maybe put this songs down just a tad. Uh, let me see. So, okay, I have a uh, the SDN cast project open and you can get this by going, I must, actually, I must actually get these links set up fairly easy. So it's github.com slash SDN code slash SDN cast. So if you do want to follow along, you can uh, head up to this uh, website, github.com slash SDN code slash SDN cast.nl. And where you want to be working is in this revamp branch um, so this revamp branch contains the old one and the new one so under the source file you go to the STM cast this other one the STM cast.nl is the current old the razor pages one that we are converting 
So you can also see by the date, it's six months ago. And then uh, where you want to be is this SD cast folder. If you just joined us, welcome very much. I always do that. If you just joined us, uh, welcome to the show. We are messing around uh, with the code stencils uh, application and to see how, how it works. Then we'll dive into the STN cast admin page to implement a admin form um, onto our website. I shouldn't really, I shouldn't really install this on my machine, right? So that should I do here or oh, darn. That will take another while. Sorry, I'm not going to execute this here because I've got a whole setup here and if I need to restart my machine, it's going to be blowing up in my face. So I wonder if I can copy and paste stuff to this thing, to this. It will take a minute. Um, okay, so let's quickly go back to our code. So what do we have here? So we have a couple of components. Uh, guys, if you if you, if you you just join us, welcome again. Uh, the chat is open. Do reach out, introduce yourself, say hello. Don't be afraid, we don't bite. And uh, let's see if we can code some stuff together. Um, okay, so what do we need? We need to go to the admin page, which is a razor, razor component in itself. Um, and it has a, as you can see, it goes to the admin slash admin page. Um, and it also includes um, an authorized attribute. So it only protects this page. So this body is not implemented yet. So I always, I always tend to go to the previous the previous site to see uh, what what was implemented. But actually, before I think what we, what we should do, we should actually. I know I'm jumping around a lot here. Um, I think what we need to do is we need to upgrade our uh, yes, we need to upgrade from preview nine to RC one. So we had a good blog post here. .NET Core 3 RC 1. Okay. And uh, this is the updates three days ago by Daniel Roth. Um, and we need to see how to upgrade an existing project. To upgrade an existing project, migration steps. That's preview nine. Uh, all right, so to update to RC1, update all ASP.NET Core star packages to this version. So let's see. I don't have any ASP.NET Core star versions. Oh, I do. Microsoft.ASP.NET Core, this one. So it will be probably this one, right? So. And all ASP.NET Core Blazor packages we want to upgrade. Well, it stays on Preview 9, I think. Okay. I think that's much better. The sound was a bit tweaking in my eyes, or my ears, rather. Uh, where are we? Microsoft extensions to RC3. I think... Yeah, just actually install this would be fine, right? It's downloading substantially faster for some reason. Martin. Or HDN cast, sh should I say. <laughs> um, the rest of the things I'm just actually gonna keep as is. Language, should I do an 8? Can I, can I do this? Can I make it version 8? Can I do version 8? 
yeah that i have um i have done that uh, it's the preview build it's the one that has been uh, released so i've done that before the stream because last time in the stream i did not have it then uh, there was a bit of a troubles okay so i think if i have the latest preview of visual studio this should have have the rc one but we never you never know let's uh let's close everything down to see what happens in the meanwhile jump back over to uh our sandbox environment is check out code stencil to see if it can actually help us maybe do cool things faster and I believe it would let's accept the um, awesome code um, okay next 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 um, back Back to my question, Code Stencil, did you do this in a .NET Core or the full framework or is it non.NET at all? Or is it a secret? Okay, we've got 30 days to try this out, so which is quite cool. Not core. Okay, so it's the full framework then, I believe. Or is it not .NET at all? This looks a bit Java-y. Just framework. Okay, so full framework. That's done. That, that's quite cool. Um, nothing wrong with the full framework. That's, uh, that's still awesome. I mean, it's Windows only, right? Um, you must also check out the new MSIX package mechanism you can package stuff for the Windows Store because if I don't know if you're um, aware the Windows 10 S release like uh, you normally have on your services to uh, service devices comes out with Windows S or uh, Windows S that's a secure Windows you know and um, it only allows applications to be installed from the store so there is a way of just um, unchecking it and it will fall back to the um, full uh, Windows uh, release or the proper Windows release to um, allow you to install applications from any source but it's seen as less secure so uh, but the MSIX package mechanism helps you to package literally any application um, into a uh, into a MSIX package which is understandable by Windows it comes with updates, so if you want to do updates. Do you have a SQL Server DB on your machine? Oh, no, I don't. But with the power of Azure, we have one. And we can quickly hook up one if you want one. Um, my stream seems to be lagging. Uh, let me investigate. Is that so? Can any other person... Uh, Confirm that. Because according to my stats, the bitrate is still fine. Okay, so how do I do this? Go to File, New Project, and Test. It's called a sample. Hit OK. Zero systems, okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna click OK. What did I do now? Created a text file. Okay, uh, do this again quickly. Sample two. Aha, uh -huh, here's a project type. Is it? All right, there we go. Text file, C sharp file, ASP.NET, MVC, Java. Okay, it's quite a bit of stuff. What should I choose here? Should I choose a uh, MVC application just to see what what will happen? Okay. This is quite cool, but um, 
I'm not entirely sure where to begin. So let's hit generate this to see what happens. Test, there's just one. I need to investigate how this works. Because it's uh, a bit overwhelming at first. Yes, uh, code, code Stencil says, can I show you the steps? The floor is yours. Guide me, sir or ma'am. Uh, tell me where to go. Then I'll do it. Hey, there's a schema generator. There's a schema importer. You need to use a stencil. Now, do I go to file new project? Or what should I do? From stencils. Okay, manage. Oh, I need to. Okay. Manage stencils. All right, there we go. Now there's a blazer one that's installed, which is quite cool. Is it installed? No, nothing. Let's see. Are there any? Okay, so as from the looks of things, I can only see a Spilotnet core ones. And others so there's no blazer one yet so if we say we want to generate a web API install let's do that that's installing okay does that mean it's been installed all right okay now it's been installed now what do I do there's Xamarin, right? how cool is this? There's Xamarin, there's JavaScript, there's everything you would need. All right, so now, if we go new project, will it? Now I'm jumping the gun. Aha, now I see you have to choose a stencil. Okay. So I've got the ASP.NET core one, or ASP.NET one rather, select. And then, okay, let's just see what happens here. There's something is happening. Ah, I see. Okay. So it's basically a template engine. Um, great. So, okay. So this gives me this. Okay. So it's all variables and stuff like that. This is very cool. Let's install the core one. See what happens. Maybe the blazer one. Um, but as I can see, this is a sample, I don't know, five. Okay. All right, so now if I hit generate, hopefully, I'm not gonna mess too much too around on, on this because I'm gonna get sidetracked. Uh, yes, let's navigate me to the output folder. Uh, I'm actually not going to be importing a database now. I'm actually just going to quickly check out how this works. And then... Um, just going to see because this... Will this work? No. Copy. Let's go to dev. Look at that. It copies across copies across um, sandboxes, which is quite cool. Let's open it up and see. Okay, 
let's see if this actually runs. Oh, no dev spaces. So I just went file new file new project from the stencils thing. Um, and I've generated something to see if it works. Wait, there's now build errors. There's some problems maybe. Yeah. Figure out. Okay, code stencil, thank you very much for this. Uh, we will definitely take a look at this uh, on a later stage. Um, time is a bit uh, not on my side now. So what I'll do is I'll offline take a look at this. Maybe we can have you on the show one day and you can give us a cool demo on uh, what code stencil can do. But uh, yet again, big ups to you. Here's a capigen for you, my friend, to, uh, to show us something cool out there. Uh, if you guys want to learn more, go check out codestencil.com. Great. And exit. Okay. That was actually the first proper use case for uh, Sandbox. Amazing. Okay, I've now installed... Oh, that's not what I want. Visual Studio. No, not Blend. Is that even a thing? Blend? Oh, I see. The code stencil says no database will error out. Hmm, it shouldn't really error out, right? It should work and then... I don't know, that's my opinion. The thing is now just stuck. And... Uh, Code Stencil, nice. Thanks for looking at it. My pleasure. Let's go to uh, Visual Studio again. Visual Studio. No studio preview. That, that one. I'm still gonna maybe pin that to my uh, taskbar. And we continue with our awesome website. Blend XAML. Hmm. Who needs that if you have Blazor? Okay. Um, where were we? So if we now just compile this, this should still run, right? Or oh, there's still Microsoft extensions. I need to update this. This said we must update it. Microsoft extension package we need to update because currently it's running on 2.2. Can you believe that? Right, so if we even need that. So a quick rebuild, control shift B and a quick run to run it. Works fine. It's awesome, it's working, and live coding. Should, we should actually have a runner. Uh, okay, so everything is working fine. Um, okay. Opening up the old site. And then I'm going to declare tab bankruptcy. Yeah, by closing all the tabs. Uh, and then we have this admin screen. So this admin screen is a bunch of things. So it has it has a menu that we already have. It's got some styles. Okay, so this is where the actual cool things will go in. Model environment name. So yet again, let's maybe see if we can paste and copy. Copy and paste rather. These things. Okay. Um...
So if I grab this admin screen, dev, move it over to, um, I'm going to teach you guys a trick. If we say, yeah, if I do that, it won't work, right? So let's go, go to the properties, launch settings. watch this work <laughs> no it won't work command line arguments around with that okay so what do we have um, open up the terminal again go to CD SDN cast uh, and I think it is source SDN cast and then we say uh, .NET watch it will watch our folder structure and run okay SDN cast Uh, we'll just hijack this one for now. Localhost 5001. Okay, so we need to go to this page here. Uh, page body. We'll just stick that uh, HTML in there to see what will happen. And obviously, if we hit re save now, it will break because. You know, it's, it doesn't compile. So what do we have here? We're going to go back to our other page. And yeah, maybe just. Close this one now. Um, okay, going back to the old one. So we have a back end CS thing here going. Let's just kill this page. So what does it do? It has a hosting environment. It has a live show detail service, a memory cache, options of settings, object mapper, and a logger, um, and a couple of data properties that we need to import. So you can imagine if we can maybe stick in these guys. And then um, this might be a good, this might be a good idea to uh, split things up a bit. I'm going to create a new class called admin dot cs admin dot razor dot cs and um, I'm gonna create a component base from this and I'm gonna inherit the admin what is this let me just think and I'm going to edit the component, view component. No, it's not view component. What was it? It's 
component, right? No, it's not that component base. That seems legit. I hope it's this. I think it's this. If we can just maybe consult the docs here for a second. Docs.asp.net. And we go to, go to um, laser. And we go to components. Uh, code stencil is the GitHub version up to date. I just cloned it and cannot get it to run. Well, uh, what does it say? Does it uh, complain about something? And also, do you clone the correct project? Or well, it's the correct repo, but do you run the correct project? Remember, there's an ASDNCast.nl, which is the old one. And then there's the ASDNCast one um, with capital ASDN. That is the one you want to be running, but that is in the revamp branch. So component classes. I want to move it out to its own backend class. Component libraries maybe. No, this is definitely components. Okay, so component classes. Uh, okay. What do I say here? What do I name this? stencils this is the one I cloned to keep reto yeah that is fine that is exactly the one that you have to clone but just make sure that you run the revamp branch not the master I'm just looking for um, Eight layer portal is now following me. Thank you very much, eight layer portal. Thank you very much for that follow. Here's a capogen for you, my friend. Thank you very much. That is awesome. Uh, how are you doing? If you are in the chat room, thank you very much. Um, do reach out, say hello. Uh, wow, that's cool. Another follow. Uh, let me see. I'm looking now for. Component base, they say. No, it's not this one. Cascading values, razor templates. Hmm. layer portal hello thank you for joining interesting name uh, I believe this is component base but I'm not sure where can I see the components here is some of these things hidden Do I f12 on this and can I go somewhere Oh yeah, of course, why didn't I see it? 
8 layer or I said 8 layer short for infinite layer so that's your name let me rephrase hello infinite layer portal thank you for joining my bad um, I'm now looking into the fact that I cannot the generated I cannot see the generated one so I can say, for instance, implements or inherits, and I can go, for instance, uh, admin component base. All right. That means that we can. Go back here, copy the, the properties and stick this in here. This maybe this song has too much words for me, so I'm just gonna skip it if you don't mind. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got display, this is all component annotation things. If you don't mind, I'm gonna change the the, the theme to dark because we all are should be in the dark boom that's much better i think this is on the eyes right so this uh so this is date after now that's a new one f12 yeah that's a new attribute And just copying that. Uh, where do we put this? I see there's all the models there. Okay, so what do we need here? We've got services. We've got services here. And then... Um, uh, this is also a, a few... Uh, uh, too much. S the song, if you don't mind me skipping this. It's all services. So where do we put the... Where should we put that one? Uh, it's an attribute, so maybe we should just put it... I don't want to put it under models. Date after now attribute. Okay, stick that in there. Okay, that's a validation attribute. Cool, that works. Code Stencil, what is your Twitter handle? I should actually do commands. So this is my uh, Twitter handle. Twitter.com slash Farney Renders. Great, so that's there. Temp data. What is temp data? Okay, that's core MVC. Hmm. Do we need to have core MVC stuff in here? Ooh. This is interesting. I'm gonna comment this out because we're not dealing with MVC here. We're dealing with Blazor. And although we can most probably use MVC, let's just put it back. I don't really wanna. Okay, so what do we have here now? We have this thing. So we can go ahead and we can say environmental name. That should go away in a sec. That should go away. That should go away. Right? Okay. And the reason why that works is because we inherit from admin component base. 
and that inherits from components. So it's as if we're doing inline. So this you can see as in code behind rather for this razor. So we don't really want to do a, um, because this page is fairly big. Um, just taking to, to about for instance, about doesn't have any logic. If we go to live coding, for instance, so live coding has this code section, which is not bad, but um, it just breaks up things a bit more elegantly if we uh, do it like a code behind kind of thing. And it's much more attractive to work on, I would, I would say. And we'll just uh, stick the app settings in there. Everything there should be model. Some of these songs sometimes is horrible. Are horrible. I can say these things because I'm not natively English. Cool. So now do a quick control shift B. Should I have any errors? Nope, nothing, nada. Great. So now, ship it. Let's see if it actually works. This way. Okay. Now, let's actually, see what happens now. It actually brings me back to this login screen. So this is this is all Azure. That's now. Uh, popping up so I've just signed in selected user account oh can I not use that oh, well then I log in as someone else I think I log in as my live account and that should work right so admin should now work okay and that uh, errors out because my settings is null it means it works eight errors but it means it works so just just trust me on that it's awesome. Okay, so we have, where were we? We are admin, um, and we need to go back to the page. This one, generated. It's funny. Okay, so now we can say, um, So on get, we need to kind of, uh, there's another class here, input. And on post, and update. There's so many stuff we need to port here. Oh, how cool. So let's focus on the, on the things one at a time. So on get, so this get here. Uh, we can actually go ahead and say um, public override with protected override. I have no idea. Protected override. Hmm. Just need to refresh myself a bit on this. Uninitialized, okay. Uninitialized. So then what we'll do is we'll stick that code in there. Um, and rem remember what we've done um, previously check if it is it has been yeah this, this this is not needed this is not needed because this page already checks i wonder what will happen if i comment this out the, uh, the attribute on this page and actually put it on the class here. That would be quite cool.
Does it work like that? I have no idea. We'll see. So what we can do is we can then uh, comment this out. Live show details. We'll pr probably need a. Uh, I'll steal. I'll steal this constructor. Yeah, let's go there and see. The zombie T Rex is back. Undiswag with that old school rap. <laughs> the zombie T Rex is back. Four records deep, five VPs, one mixtape because you can't kill me. Poison when I spit it. Komodo dragon, nerd core royalty. Okay, so I was thinking about him. We go. And I think that is actually not hosting environment. That should be. Web host environment. Just skipping the song. That's cool. Okay, so we have our R show date detail service. We have our memory cache. We've got I options. We've got our logger. Right. And then that passes in a I logger of, let's say, admin component base. And those things will all be like that. This dots. Trend read only field. And uh, can this work? So let's say control C, then I go control and I oh, control alt and I click down, click, 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 and I go paste. That's how you multi click, or multi paste things. And then we go control dot and generate field. Well, actually, you know what? Take this all out. Then we can even do it much better. We can put control dot here. What? Read only field there. Control dot read only field there. This would be cool to say, do it for all the parameters. This would, would be cool. But I suppose we cannot have everything we want, eh? What's happening? My logger. Okay, so. Hi guys, if you just joined, welcome, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you folks. We are porting a uh, ASP.NET Core Razor Pages 2.2 framework, I believe. Two, two, dot, 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 dot .NET Core 2.2 framework. To Blazor specifically working on forms today so we're going to be doing our admin form that we're going to be porting up and that's quite interesting so do tune in um let me see everything is fine okay so now if i hit run now let's quickly do a quick compile okay we'll we'll have errors Okay, this one. So I'm just going to change this to live show details. This mustn't return the page because this is the page. And update model properties. Async. Cannot use local variable before it's declared. What? Ah, oh, 
Okay, that's why. Yeah, but see, there's something wrong here. With this live show detail service should be service. Should be like that. Okay, so we have that out of the way. Update model properties. So where do we go for that? Private void. So now let's go. Control copy. Paste. We have the mapper. App settings. Well, that's a bit stupid. Ah, it's app settings dot value. Okay. And then next Thursday is get next Thursday. This one. Who figured? Okay, so I would say we probably need some unit tests here sometime, but uh, so let's see what uh, what happens. Convert UTC, is that even a thing? Convert from UTC to CET? No, it's an extension method. We also need to now date time extensions. Cool. Where does that live? Extensions. Mm, nice. Let's copy that. Make extensions folder, and we uh, we can party like a rock star. Alright, so I'm going to paste that guy in there. Hopefully nothing would change too much. And I can go control dot use SDN cast extensions. Right, update live show details. Live show details model. Okay, so that will go away. Okay. Marcus D. No. Level up. Let's play that and see what happens. Okay, so what do we have here? Oh, please no. Okay, let's quickly see where is this other songs. Chill, maybe, maybe better. Right. This is actually. Pass that it fails. Okay, there is no argument correspond to the form of inf. Hmm. Okay. Um. Interesting. Okay. Did 
There is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter nth. Okay, that's uh, cryptic. Very cryptic. Why is this failing now? Stencil, gotta get lunch. Be right back and see if you're still online. Till later. Uh, enjoy lunch. Uh, the Dutch niche um, always say a schmakelijk. That means enjoy your lunch or just enjoy your food. Hope to see you again, Code Stencil. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm not trying to figure out why this is breaking just maybe close down and open up a VS code again because this is not supposed to happen but uh, let's see Ooh, okay something is lighting up everything is lighting up control shift B okay there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter nth. Okay. I see. So that's uh, okay. That might be okay. I see. So we cannot use this. What we can do is we can make properties of it. Private, and we can say uh, environment. Let's just make it uh, in. That's also an. get set I think we can go use inject here to do the penis injection hopefully that will work do like a get 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 oops I think I broke something here. So it's environment. See, that works now. So hopefully, when I run, run this now, it won't uh, bomb on me, you know? I hate it when things bomb. Oh, my soul. I think something actually bombed. Actually, executing endpoint. Okay, so that works. That works. Admin, login. Oh, not that one. That one. If I go there, it does not work. It bombs out. Pr 
probably because we've got authorized here. Well, is it? not. Oh, I forgot to put inject in front of all these other properties. Okay. That's my properties. So it goes to the admin screen, which is cool. Login. that still breaks mm. well it breaks meaning it doesn't want to go there interesting okay circuit Cannot provide value for property environment on type because the property has no setter. Hmm, okay, fine, fine, fine. Fine, fine, fine. We'll just do set. On the old school way. Nice. Okay. Okay, so now let's run this again to see if this works, folks. It's taking its time, it's compiling, it's working. But the question is, is it running? That's the question. Run again. Yay, we've got a form. Cool. Now let's just see if my uh, hypothesis is correct. If we go to the incognito page and I go to admin, it still asks me to log in. That still works, so that's fine. Um, okay, so now we have a bit of a problem. We don't have the labels. And um, some of these things doesn't really work as expected. But we've got a form. I think uh, that's a first development okay so we've got that injected we don't have to do this uh, constructor thing and um, quickly jumping back to our admin page There's a special way I think you'd need to do forms. Let's quickly go back to the form. So we have got this basically set up here, edit form. Uh, and then you've got data validations, input text, and that binds. All right, so what we can do is do the same. So we'll just maybe copy that for now. Uh, Add my screen, da, 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 and we'll do a, an edit form. Okay, the edit annotations, the model. Mm, okay. The model, what will the model? Okay, I probably need a model to be passed in here. Okay. 
So let's do that. Let's uh, go to the razor page. And I think we have these guys. Needs to go to the model section. Okay, so that's that. And we can actually remove them there. Um, remove this. So this is where it can, um, so what we need here is a model. I think it's similar to what we're trying to do at the live coding one, where we have a, uh, the previous shows, which is the model here. It's like sort of same. Uh, not really chilling. Admin model. Excuse me, I'm going to remove that for now. Okay, so where is this problem now? We've got this, this one. The edit form is, I think it's this. Okay, and on valid submit, handle valid submit. So what we, we do here, mm. you look like DJ Skippy tonight, SDN cast, ha 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 ha. I'm torn between the fact that we need a view model or a model for this kind of thing. Because this page really just updates properties and it updates this. Um, I'm reluctant. I'm actually reluctant to do it like this. Uh, do this again. Apologies. And it will, I think it's still in memory, so let's just paste this in there. Control dot. And control dot. And then we'll remove all these other things. 
like that. And then this, let's make it a, uh, a property. We say it's admin model. Let's call this model. Um, Okay, live show date PST. I believe it's that. Takes a while, but it's, uh, we're getting there. Okay, so that's the model thing. Um, and I think this is a new admin model, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so now the admin model is separate from the view. And we probably need like model dot thing back here again. So let's go to model. Um, actually, rename this to admin model because it is an admin model, right? Okay, so what do we have here? We have, going back here, validate or handle submit. So we have a, a private void. And that belongs to handle valid submit. Does it need to be private or public or protected? All right, so we have got admin model. Okay, so this is how we bind it. Validation summary. Okay, so this is the success message. So if uh, if that success message, we say admin model dot success message. This should be in the admin base component, I would say. base one and then uh, show success message should be also moved out to the base one that's much better 
Okay, so we have a uh, admin message basically. So we'll just change this edit form. There. That becomes edit form. Okay, so that's that. We'll do a data validations validator and a validation summary also in here. Just chuck that in there. Input text. Mm, let's do that there. Live show details. Um, validation. So what will happen if I just do this? Input text name. Okay, still need an identifier and a label. see okay so we would still need this and then we can say for instance is a thing validation yeah Let's keep that input for admin, admin message. Hopefully this works. This is a label for admin message. And we say here, it's Admin message. Like that. And is it valid to say that the validation message? For. What is for expecting a funk? What is what? Ah, uh, see, okay. model that doesn't want to work <laughs> come now play long
Okay. Hi friends, if you just joined us, welcome. We are struggling with Blazor forms to implement it properly. Um, and I believe the way around it is like this. Admin model dot admin message. Then I can kill that one, right? So if I hit ref F5, hopefully that will work. Or not. Oh my soul. This thing's breaking. That's, not, that's model or admin model. Next show date suggestion that. And obviously, the other one. Admin model dot. That should also be let's see, let's just do that. So many things. Okay, so control shift B. No errors. Well, we've got a the submit button that um, kind of doesn't work. This input field does not give me any um, I think something else is maybe wrong here. Yeah. Because it's not even rendering the label. And I believe the labels is a manual. That's a bit silly, right? Do that. Do we have a uh, submit button? Yep. Type submit. Okay. I'm clearing that. Hopefully that will work. Okay, so there's my admin message. But if I save it, nothing happens. Not even one. Okay, so that's... Uh, okay, so it's form control, so class... I should go to the bind, bind value. Form control. Restart. Okay, that works. That's nice. Okay, it looks much better now. That's green. So, uh, huh? Green. Okay, it's not. Requ it's not required. I see. Okay, now I actually want to see if I can mess around with this validation stuff. So, our admin model has a live. Um, it's got an admin message. In this one. 
standby message. So why isn't this thing shown? I will just I'll call this min length. Make it three just to test the validation out. Cool. That's actually cool. So if I do that, that errors out. That's actually pretty cool. Hmm. That's pretty cool. All right. Another one, what do we have? Actually, let's just skip this one, because it's not needed. Well, it wasn't the old one, let's just skip that way. Um, okay, so this one we would need to say, well, it was an old one really, so we had to put it back. This one, and this one is called the live show embed URL. And in uh, live show embed URL, Candice. Then we have a text area. Oops. Input text area. of properties back. Uh, this is actually class. That's okay. And that is the live show URL. Live, is it live show HTML? That can be killed. Okay, this is interesting. So now we need to get a date picker. So this is where um, something called Blazard would be uh, a nice touch because Blazard has these uh, components like type ahead, localization, fluent validation menu, models, toast, session storage um, in place. So it's got a bunch of uh, controls. Let's see, we've got Input, so this is um, text input again. And this is for the PST. 
Hmm. Format. do like uh, to string and give this format will this work I don't know I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's go to string format. I wonder how to get that format thing now going again. Just want to skip this song a bit. This song is a bit not chilling. I think for now that should work. Okay, so that will take care of that. Then we have this button. Next Thursday. Okay, that's just does next Thursday. <laughs> um I need to figure out how that will work in a sec. And we probably also have a validation because that's most probably a custom component that we can that we can write. Okay. Got that. Got the span for some reason. And the submit button. So how are we doing with build? Okay. Where's the problem here? Cannot convert lambda. My eyes.
What is the problem now? Actually struggling to concentrate at this very moment. Maybe we should um Why is this not working now? Something I'm missing. The error messages aren't really cryptic or is very cryptic. I've got a feeling it's this guy. Yeah, it's somewhere here. That's amazing. How do you do then like a date? Find value production date. Oh, input date. Hmm. He's sleeping here, you know. <laughs> Let's kill this. Uh... Okay, so that's supposed to be working. Hi, friends. If you just join us, welcome. I'm skipping the songs, especially for you guys. We are trying out our new Blazer application. Look at that. We've got a form. The date component kind of working. We just need to uh, make this a, a URL. That's because uh, that's not a URL, right? But we need to quickly update a few things. Input. That's that can go. Um, and then we need to update a few things here. Yeah? We need to uh, let's add a message and then we say live show embed URL. Show embed URL, I would say it's um, is that way. Why is this kept the songs? These songs are so. Let's go for ambient. 
Okay, let's go for ambient sounds. I think that's much better for this time of night. Then we have uh, live show HTML. Okay, and then we have next next show date. Okay, so that should be fine. Okay, so there is my stuff next Thursday. That's component we can also fix. Okay, so all this can be input date. Fine. I actually want to go back to the live show embed URL. This is a uh, URI. URL attribute. So check what this happens. You do this and you now run it. When you go back to your page and you don't make this a URL, well that is a URL. If you don't make this a URL, that's still a URL. That happens because it's not a URL. It needs to be a fully fully qualified name, even if you go FTP. It's not a URL. Well, it is because it's got a protocol. So that works. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be. This is completely optional. Live show HTML. How do we do the Next show date because is the cast has a has a time in here. Change this to input text. It breaks. Let's change this to string. Now, actually. Next show date PhD string. And that is um, return. 
show date psd dot format or dot value rather So the format goes in there and then set. It will be different. Set will be setting, I think it will be parse or something. It will be actually parsing the value. think it can work like this right I just go quickly stealing with this format I think it is from here this one Okay, so now input next out show date PSD string. We can then uh, bind to it. Like that. Well, <laughs> that kind of works. There we go. Okay, so that works. So we'll keep the settings as is, and then we will um, commit this, have a, a snooze, and then continue with this other maybe in this week I don't promise um, but uh, let's all commit this getting late here in the Netherlands someone has got to sleep you know didn't look really look like we've added a bunch of stuff but uh, started with admin screen so work in progress let's do that now what we also can do is uh, for the just do like a test publish Service is unavailable. Are we going to struggle with this again? <laughs> really? I think we, what we need to do is we need to uh, install the extension again. Switch. Uh,
abstentions. Let's just see what's there. Now just quickly updating uh, ASP.NET Core on the server. Let's see if that will actually help. Spunant. Okay, please help. Oh, still. Oh, there was a problem starting on your request. Okay, so it's not okay. What? Is it doing something now? Did I miss something? No, what am I doing? Okay, so now it's actually doing something else. Let's try this again. Publish. Self-contained. Okay, so let's do that. Not framework dependent, but self-contained. Save. Publish. Now, self-contained for the folks that do not know what that is, it's uh, deploying. It's a way of deploying the runtime of ASP.NET Core with your website, because framework dependent means that it needs a .NET Core on the server. But what I'm doing now is I'm actually don't care what's on the server. I'm packaging everything nicely, neatly, up, and I'm pushing it up. It increases the size, but it's um, because this would, would would work now. Hopefully. Ready for the capuchins. Right, so that works. Okay, so admin, login, live. Okay, so we have got that, and if we mess it up completely, that is not a URL. Um, I think even that is not a. Cool, that that works. So we can do a bunch of. Things still, yeah. So it's almost, almost there. Um, yeah, with that, with that, folks, I am going to switch over. Uh, for all our friends, uh, SDN Cast. Uh, who else was here? Um, just sat it so long. Uh, Infinite Layer Portal. I just want to give a shout out to you folks. Martin from Stump from the SDN Cast uh, show. Um, and other people, if I've forgotten you. Uh, also, there's um, Code Stencil, of course. Uh, so, thank you very much for joining. And uh, do tune out, um, or tune in, rather, again, um, next time. And then we'll do some more coding on Blazor fixing the admin screen and then we'll party like a rock star do check tune in we have got a different uh, segment of the show um that i'm actually uh, teaching dotnet core uh, and c sharp for beginners so if you feel you you don't do not know do not know what i'm doing or you if you find it hard to to uh, follow along do check out there's some uh, i think it's every second week or so i I'm, i'm trying to sort of mix it up a bit by catering for our beginner folks. But having said that, folks, 
I'm out. Dropping the mic. Cheers.